Good morning and welcome to the Tirupati Graphite PLC Full Year Results 2022 and Forecast Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll. I would now like to hand you over to Shashir Podar, Executive Chairman. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Lloyd. Uh, a very warm welcome to all our investors, current and prospective. It's been a, a very engrossing time for us at uh, TG. And uh, yes, we were delayed a bit on the results. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of things simultaneously. Uh, I hope our results have uh, been found by in our investors as something which is reassuring to them. And we thought it will be good to spend this time with you to share more about where we are going and uh, what is next. Alongside, we have our CFO, Amiya, and Purvi, whom you all have met many times. Uh, he heads our, she heads our business development and corporate affairs. For taking you through the few slides that we have, many of uh, which would also answer some of the pre-submitted questions. May I hand over to Purvi first, who will talk about the uh, market aspects of graphite, how they are evolving. And then Amea would present some numbers out of our uh, annual results. And then we take things forward with uh, uh, what's next. Purvi, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Shishir. A very good morning to all our shareholders and investors present on the call. So today we have talked about graphite markets and uh, graphite having more than 150 applications. Uh, but today I'm going to focus more on the criticality of the highest growing application, which is the lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles. So the first chart uh, we see here is a demand chart for the electric vehicle uh, global penetration uh, across the next few years. In 2021, uh, we have around 6.6 uh, .6 million EVs on the road now, and this is threefold from that of 2018. By the next few years, this is going to grow up multifold, as you can see here. Now, let us come to how these EVs are being consumed across various jurisdictions. So previously, China was the biggest consumer. But as we go in time, China, uh, the consumption in Europe, uh, in US, in Japan and the rest of the globe, including India, is rising and rising. But if we look at the uh, materials forecast again, uh, the lithium demand, as we know, uh, from the current production is expected to grow by over uh, around 11 uh, times. Graphite stands second, uh, and uh, that was a surprise for us too. But graphite is growing seven times by 2030 from current uh, demand, which is about 1.2 million tons, followed by the other battery minerals. Moving to the next slide, let me give you a critical uh, in-depth overview of the entire battery mineral supply chain. So if we look at uh, this image, uh, we can see the supply chain divided in four parts. One is the mining and primary processing of various minerals. Second is the downstream processing of the minerals. Third is the construction of the cell uh, materials like the anode and cathode. And the fourth is manufacturing of the cells and the batteries uh, and the vehicles. Coming to the first part of it, uh, all the dark blue that you see uh, in this uh, entire image is basically Chinese uh, footprint along the entire value chain. And if you look at graphite, that is even more striking. So graphite across the entire value chain is dominated by one single nation, which is China. Starting from the mining and processing, China controls over 80% of the entire capacity. TG is one of the very few producers outside of China. On the downstream side, China produces about uh, 60 to 70%. Uh, this includes not just spherical graphite. Spherical graphite is in fact 100% in China, but this also includes other products like expandable graphite, high purity graphite, etc. On the cell components, the anode is made of graphite. 90% uh, of the anode is graphite. Uh, and um, of that, 100% of anode is currently being made in Southeast Asia and China. 
Coming to the battery cells and EVs, it's the same story. The EVs have started coming up. Uh, EV production is happening uh, by the leads automakers everywhere in the world. So what is the critical risk that it presents? Uh, so if you see here, the EVs are being produced all around the world. The consumption of electric vehicles is all around the world, but the supply chain is dependent on a very few nations. So the risk is that five years down the line, when there is a shortage, like there is for lithium now, similarly, we're seeing, uh, you know, uh, with the kind of demand increase in graphite that's happening, it's quite uh, a possibility. Uh, in case of a shortage, uh, China will be having its own supply, but all others around the world will be strapped with material supply sources. This gives us, as a company, one of the biggest opportunities in this space. Let me zoom in to the different parts of the um, uh, material supply chain. So the cell production is catching up with uh, Europe leading behind China and coming up with a lot of cell manufacturing capacities. Uh, this chart gives a brief on the various uh, cell manufacturing capacities coming up across Europe. Uh, on the right hand side, we have the mineral production chart from Benchmark, uh, where uh, it shows how much of primary mining and processing is needed in each of the critical battery minerals. So if we look at natural graphite, uh, natural graphite quali quantitatively needs the highest growth, even more than lithium. Uh, and on the percentage wise, it stands next second to lithium. So the resource and the processing is a big risk in the, natu in the natural graphite space. And this gives TEG the biggest opportunity that there is. Uh, with this, I would hand over to Mr. Ramaya to take you through our annual results and numbers there. Uh, Mr. Ramaya, over to you. Thank you, Purvi. Uh, so, and ha hello, everyone. Let's now uh, dig deeper uh, to understand how the company has performed over a period of time. So, start. let's start with uh, sources and deployment of the funds. The company has raised about 23 million pounds uh, in equity. and as at 31st March, about 1 million pounds were balance of convertible debt. If we reduce the cost of fundraise from it and the interest paid on CLN, the company has about 22.8 million pounds available for deployment across the projects. If we come to the deployment of funds, the capex incurred to date uh, in Madagascar is about 11 million pounds. Resource exploration uh, costs that are acquired from ER acquisition is about three and a half million pounds. Working capital and cash balance as at 31st March was about three million pounds. And admin and corporate costs incurred for last five years collectively were about five million pounds. So this basically sums up how the movement of funds has undertaken uh, during the uh, last five years. Let's now dig deeper into the capex that has been undertaken by the company. So starting with uh, the drilling and earth moving equipment, about 2.7 million pounds worth drilling and equipment, uh, uh, mining equipment have been uh, purchased by the company. So this fleet includes, you know, hydraulic excavators, bulldozers, uh, dump trucks, etc. Processing plant uh, costed about three and a half million pounds. This gives the company capacity to produce, uh, to ore process about 2,400 tons per hour, which is approximately 1.8 million tons per annum. This also includes other ancillary activities like uh, power generation, engineering workshop, etc. In addition to this, company has also uh, incurred costs on, on infrastructure and admin assets in Madagascar. About 330,000 pounds have been spent on this. This is basically internal roads, accommodation for the staff, bridges, and other activities undertaken for infrastructure. The last bit is exploration and evaluation uh, expense, which is about one and eight million pounds. Uh, this, this gives us the capacity of uh, 7,000 uh, meter diamond core drilling which has been undertaken and current, currently in progress. We have published our first CPR in 2020, and currently we are working on uh, updating it with our, uh, our consultants SRK. Uh, this will be published in due course. As of 31st March, uh, we had about 2.5 million pounds worth advances given for uh, CapEx in Madagascar. 
these are basically the advances given to the suppliers of machinery and equipments for our upcoming 18000 tons capacity plant at sahamami from 31st march till date most of this equipment has already landed the site and we are on progress uh, of setting up this uh, plant capacity uh, we are planning to uh, start the commissioning within 2022 and these plans have been already uh, announced in past moving on uh, the operating results of the company so the company had uh, about 3000 tons capacity in 1920 and produced about 1300 tons in that year by 31st march we have developed the capacity to about 12000 tons and uh, in spite of the challenges that we faced uh, we were able to produce about 3000 tons in last financial year if we go to the cost of production the two items that basically show major variation between years is mining and processing cost and logistics and utility i would like to explain this a uh, little bit deeper so the company in undertakes all the erection and commissioning activity of the machinery by its own resources so as for ifrs and following the conservatism principle where a capex item and a specific expense incurred for that has a one to one direct relationship can be capitalized however due to the uh, current uh, uh, processes reporting processes where we could not establish exact one to one relationship between the capex and the expenses incurred for commissioning of this machinery following the prudency we have decided not to capitalize that to overcome this we have already established uh, reporting processes and we are on way to reach to the uh, gross margins as published in 2021 uh, and we are estimating that those can be restored within this financial year over to you mr shishir thank you so much uh, purvi and thank you so much amiya just some remarks before i move to what's next the markets of lithium ion battery will grow and alongside the markets for other applications of graphite will grow. We see ourselves as a company which inherits responsibility to contribute to the global needs of flake graphite, which is a critical material. And it contributes very extensively in the energy transition economy. On our financials, as Amiya just said, We've drilled 7,000 meters of diamond core drilling. You know, it costs anywhere between $150 to $200 a meter to use diamond core drilling. Our total exploration costs to date in five years is a fraction of what another company would just do hiring drilling rigs. If you see our capital expenditure overall, we are possibly... Uh, I, I can't think of a company, not only in graphite space, but that can do so much with so prudent use of capital. With this, let me take you through to what we see happening next. Yes, we did face a difficult time in this year earlier on, and that was a learning period for us. We are now focused that we must ensure that the company reaches a 30,000 ton per annum production. We have released our forecast of production. We've tried to be as conservative as we can, and it will be our endeavor to surpass the forecasts that we have made. In September, the fruits of what we did in the last few weeks before that did come into result. We ran the projects very smoothly in the last month. Since the rains have receded, we have at war footing, taking on 
rebuilding the roads with this surety that they can support our future logistic requirements. A substantial quantum of work has already been done. And I must say, even here, we have done it at costs which are possibly in the lowest quotient one can do. Once we stabilize our 30,000 tons capacity completely, it is our next step to go to the 84,000 tons capacity at our current Madagascan operations. Our target, our aim is to reach this by end of 2024. I can say, however, that over this and the next quarter, we will remain focused on ensuring that we first realize the 30,000 tons capacity completely, creates its markets, you know, set up everything for this volume of operation in place, not distract ourselves and our teams from that at this time. In the meantime, continue to, to plan execution of the next expansions and at the appropriate time, hit hard and take our next expansions into the ground. As far as markets are concerned, I can share that our geographical mix of markets is now evolving uh, better. In Asia, we are selling not only to one country, but many countries. We are selling to India, we are selling to Japan, we are selling to Turkey, we are selling to uh, in Asia, possibly these are the three countries we are right now. But in we see uh, getting into China because we started receiving inquiries uh, spontaneously from China because you know China uh, has issues in graphite production. In Europe, our markets are expanding much faster. We had, in fact, you know, not triggered all our buyers' lists till we reached better production levels, which we are now in the process of doing. And same in the U.S., we see our markets growing substantially in the United States also. In the last few weeks, as we have communicated earlier, we are also focusing into renewable energy. Our first 100 kilowatt plant is all set up. Specialists are on the ground, checking every aspect of it. And from this month, we'll start generating power from it. The 400 kilowatt second plant that we intend to set up for that substantial assessments have now been completed. We are in the process of determining what uh, in-country uh, compliance requirements are and which are very light, I can share that with you. So we intend to get to the construction of the 400 kilowatt plant also after we stabilize the first 100 kilowatt plant. For every 100 kilowatt hydropower that we generate, we would save 100,000 liters of diesel. And one liter of diesel burned emits about 2.5 kilograms of CO2. Thus, you can very easily calculate from the numbers in this slide, what is the volume of emissions our hydropowers will save? And also what is the volume of cost it will save? The second big decision that we took was splitting our plant into pre-concentrate and final concentrate. There were a lot of questions on what the financial impact of these decisions are. So I thought it's good to give some numbers around it. The pre-concentrate plant, the first that we set up at Watomina, was commissioned and has been in continuous operation as we also announced. A second pre-concentrate plant at Watomina, which we intended to set up, we had announced that also, is now under construction. We will commission that possibly by end of this month. There were questions in relation to how do we see the grade with respect to Vadumina. There have been some challenges. I can share that the area that we are mining currently is the closest deposit area to our uh, main processing plant. We are in the process of now expanding outside that. And we have also uh, discovered better grade materials in this area also. So we are seized with it. We will take forward the improvement of grade. However, 
I would also like to share. Say if the grade is a shade lower, we still have ways to mitigate that. One processing finishing plant can take 18,000 tons per annum uh, production. We may just set up another pre-concentrate plant, which is not a huge investment. It's a smaller investment and it's a mobile plant that can be shifted apart from a bit of the construction. As far as the financial impact of the uh, pre-concentrate and final concentrate plant module arrangements is concerned, each pre-concentrate plant eliminates transport of ore, which eliminates 75,000 liters of diesel consumption per annum for one pre-concentrate plant and similar value of cost that is associated with running these vehicles that transport ore. So in a nutshell, once we have all our uh, setups completed, four pre-concentrate plants, two at each project and two final concentrate plants, we would be saving more or less 600,000 pounds in cost only with this decision annually in the operations of all. This is the quotient of decisions that we have taken. As far as cost is concerned, it also secures us in operations. Moving forward, we continue to be on the path that we have planned and we will remain and deliver as we have delivered to date. I know there have been roadblocks. I cannot deny there will be no roadblocks in the future, but you have a management, you have a board that seized with every problem as they comes and they solve it in the minimum possible time in the most cost effective way. And that's what we'll continue to do. With this, uh, I'll hand back to Lloyd uh, to take us through the Q&A session. Shashir, Puvi and Amir, thank you very much to each of you for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. While the company takes a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. We have already received a number of pre-submitted questions from investors, and I wanted to start off the Q&A session with these. The team have compiled a summary slide representing a consolidated view of these, and in the first instance, I'd like to hand back to Shashir and the team to run through those questions and responses. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Lloyd. So we did receive about 18 pre-submitted questions. Some of them have been answered in our presentation. Let me take the few summarized questions that remain. Where do we see the company 12 months from now? This, is, this was one of the questions. As we have very clearly dissipated, we will be producing 30,000 tons of graphite per annum. Within this and the next quarter, we intend to achieve all this. Moving forward, we will continue to develop our Madagascan assets. And possibly over the next 12 months, you will see us starting development of the next modules. In addition to this, we expect the acquisitions that we have made in Madagascar, three new permits to complete. We also expect the acquisition of the Mozambican assets uh, that we are, uh, we've substantially secured uh, with a recent announcement we made. That should complete. All this put together, the next 12 months will help us lay this foundation stronger for our ultimate aim to be 8% of the global graphite requirement we must be producing more or less 8% of the global graphite requirement. That is estimated to be about 400,000 tons per annum by end of 2030. We will remain focused by on delivering what we are delivering right now and creating everything required for what we intend to do in the future. On the geographical and application split of the markets. I did talk about the geographical split. These are the three main continents that consume graphite, Europe, US, and Asia. As of today, Asia is possibly the biggest consumer of graphite. 
uh, Europe is second and US is third. We see our market split similarly aligned. Our Asian markets will continue to remain the largest markets, continue to be uh, strong markets, and we will be diversifying within Asia to various consuming countries, primarily China, uh, should add up in the next few months. Japan, we're already selling. India, we're already selling. On the European side, Germany is the uh, you know, largest consumer of graphite in, that, uh, in the European nation. We will continue to develop our markets around that and other parts of Europe. And in the US, yes, obviously, we are already in there and we are looking at uh, growing that market as our production is growing. On the split on application side, so, uh, you know, the evolu evolving markets are what give us more on the future capacities. What we have to focus on is the current markets. We are selling smaller quantities into the EV sector. We are selling into other uh, energy transition applications of expandable graphite and thermal management, etc. We are selling also into the conventional markets. We are also selling into new applications in uh, metal forming industry, uh, which are considered green applications because they reduce emissions, etc. So our market split is quite diversified already. And we will continue to use that diversity because we do not want to be sector agnostic. On the demand and price outlook, uh, Purvi, would you like to speak on that, please? Sure. So on the demand side, uh, we do see over the last few months, uh, there was a bit of shortage of graphite. Uh, and uh, we did see a peak in the pricing. Uh, over the next uh, few years, uh, over the next, I think, two to three years, we are expecting that uh, with the lithium battery growth not slowing down, uh, we are expecting graphite to go into much deeper shortages, uh, and we are planning our expansions accordingly. Uh, but we do see the prices uh, taking off. Even in these economic conditions uh, with parts of the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, going under uh, stress economically, we haven't seen the prices come down. They are stable at the levels of the peak that we witnessed uh, over the last few months. Uh, so in the future, as demand grows, we are expecting price to go higher as well. Thank you, Purvi. Uh, coming on, what are the drivers for our expansion to 84,000 tons? As I was just saying a bit back, what we first would like to do is completely optimize the very significant 30,000 tons capacity that we are in the process of completing, substantially created. Once we optimize this, we have better inputs for the next modules that we intend to build. There are four modules of 18,000 tons each to be built uh, further on. We also intend substantially to leverage our cash flows uh, for further CapEx investments. So yes, the drivers for this will be complete optimization of current investments made on the ground, and then getting into expansion mode, prudently funding the future, substantially depending on the company's internal cash flows. I did talk about the grades. So we are seized with the issue of improving grades at Vatomina or finding alternatives to that. On the funding side, there was a question on uh, impacts of current macroeconomic situation on the debt markets. Yes, uh, we are aware of what is happening around the world. There are concerns uh, which every one of us are facing. But I can say that the way your company is placed today, it has the ability to demonstrate. And we have a history of demonstration. So any issues that do come up, this is the strength with which we can address them. Also with the fact of the financial numbers, you know, if you see any companies, BFS or studies who are who intend to build graphite plants, I, I encourage all our investors to have a look. About 13 to 14 million pounds spent for 30,000 
tons on the ground capacity created, including everything, including the exploration, blah, 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 everything. See where we stand. So, you know, we have a lot of strengths to demonstrate our ability and we will leverage all that for our future funding. May it be that. There were a couple of questions on an update on the downstream and DSG side. So in July, we uh, set out the uh, announcement which spelled out how we are addressing the concerns. There are three options that we will continue to work on and find solutions to integrate the downstream business into TG. I can share that over the last couple of months, we were very involved in setting right what we were doing in Madagascar right now. Now that we are in full control of that, is the time that we will be more aggressively working on the downstream side. The company does intend to set up downstream facilities in UK, as we have as a stated. But the recent macroeconomic conditions in the UK and the energy prices uh, and conditions there have been a setback. However, I'm sure these are temporary uh, situations and we will get into a full scale study for setting up uh, downstream in the UK. There were questions on whether we have identified sites. While I won't be able to divulge much more details, but I can share that we are in connect with certain departments of the government of UK, furthering our intentions and have inputs on possible sites that can be used to locate a possible downstream and graphene setup in the UK. With this, uh, we have substantially answered all the pre-submitted questions. Uh, may I go to the questions that have come up uh, now? Indeed. Thank you very much, Shashir, Purvi, and Amir for summarising and responding to those pre-submitted questions. As you've mentioned, we have received a number of questions throughout today's presentation, and thank you to all the investors for submitting their questions. Could I please ask you to read out the questions and give responses where appropriate for you to do so, and I will pick up from you at the end of those questions. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the questions is uh, in relation to what happens to the company's profitability at 6,000 tons per quarter production. I have no hesitation in saying that our past results do demonstrate the extent of operating margins the company can yield from its operations uh, that are in place. Obviously, a 6,000 tons per quarter is a substantial jump from our historical accounts. Last year was just 3,000 tons for the whole year. And we still had a positive bottom line in spite of things that Amiya explained, which hit it, uh, you know, uh, to a level lower than previous year. In spite also of the fact that we had a lot of difficulties on the ground because of the extreme weather conditions that we did uh, face, or, you know, in the first half of this year and a uh, bit of the last quarter too. So, yes, uh, the company does see itself moving to a positive uh, net bottom line as it progresses its production. The second question is uh, in relation to the uh, sales of what we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, going to produce in future. So uh, with ramping up capacity, do we have current clientele who will take this capacity as it comes online? I can confirm, yes. Our projected production for this quarter is plus of 2,000 tons. And we are booked for the entire production of the current quarter. As I said earlier, you know, we I have a very long history in graphite personally. This gives us a very wide reach globally to users of graphite. And we are activating our connections with time as we see ourselves developing into production. The company has substantially seized the next and thereafter quarters uh, order booking. So we are very much well placed to place our goods as we produce in the markets and in the best of hands. Our focus is to sell to end users, 
more or less 70% of our total production goes directly to end users. And about 30% is sold through intermediaries because there are a lot of smaller scale consumers of graphite. We don't want to miss any markets. I can confirm that we are very well placed on the marketing side. Are we on target to deliver 84,000 tons per annum by end of 2024? We remain in that position that over the next two years, two years and one quarter that we have till end of 2024, we still intend to complete the 84,000 tons capacity by that time. We have the ability to expedite it uh, if so necessary, because as per we explained, the graphite situation globally is becoming more and more difficult. Very recently, we came across a news item uh, which uh, advised that one of the uh, graphite producers in uh, northeastern China has had to close shop uh, very recently. So, you know, the world is going to have a lot of difficulty on graphite availability. And trust me, it's not easy to build and bring capacity on stream in short time for graphite. TG is possibly one of the only companies in the recent times has brought in new capacities over last year and this year. I don't recall seeing any other new capacities coming up. A lot of companies are trying, but it's not easy uh, to build a graphite plant in as short time as we have built, in fact. So we do see a situation that we may consider even faster development of our further capacities after making our current operations fully optimized. That is the first bottom line that I and our entire team are very strongly sure to be working on. Uh, there was a question on what is the payback period for the capital uh, cost of a pre-concentrate plant. So what I must first share is a pre-concentrate plant is just a part of the original plant design, but relocated at the mine site. The additional cost involved in setting up a pre-concentrate plant is just the bit of construction activity development, you know, for setting up the plant that is there and creating of a facility to pump the slurry from the pre-concentrate plant to the final concentrate plant. It's not a huge cost. And if I uh, think on uh, the savings point of view, possibly a pre-concentrate plant uh, cost can be recovered in one month because we're not adding anything new. It's the same equipment's part of the process that's going to the pre-concentrate plant. There was a com question on cost. Uh, for the previous year, why the margins have reduced last year. As Amiya explained, it's, there is no basic or you know, large increase in our cost of production per ton. You know, our earth moving equipments, all our uh, team members, everything that we have on the ground for the operations, they are also used for building the plants our engineering facilities, everything is common to construction, building, and to operations. So it's practically not possible to split every penny spent in relation to building into CapEx. That was one, because we were building a lot of plants in the last year. We finished the Vatomina plant. Uh, we substantially uh, you know, uh, completed the construction of the uh, 18,000 tons plant in Sahamami. A lot of construction has been going on and a lot of new capacity establishment has been going on. In addition to that, we had the tough times with the weather. So I can say the reflection of reduced operating margins in the previous year is more or less a one-off. The next question is, could you please explain CapEx requirement for upcoming 18,000 tons module to meet target? Okay, so overall, for the next four modules of 18,000 tons each, the estimated CapEx that we would, we would need to spend is in the range of 30 to 35 million US dollars. So, you know, it can convert, you can convert it into pounds. 
With that, we will be able to add 54,000 tons of further production. It will include all the exploration that we are currently doing, in fact. It will also include extension of internal infrastructure. For example, say Vatomina project. We have the final concentrate plant at a in part of the uh, you know uh, mining permit area, which is without graphite deposits. The mines, the deposits are spread almost three to four kilometers radius from that plant. At present, we are mining in an area which is just about one kilometer plus from the final concentrate plant. But we are going to start the process of developing the other uh, mining areas through the project. Similarly is with the Sahamami project. So ultimately, the capex that I'm talking about includes the expenditure on all these items. There was also a question on uh, uh, the search for uh, uh, additional members on the board of the company and for uh, executive presence in uh, UK. I can say that we have uh, been engaged with uh, a, a well-placed headhunter. Uh, we have been in discussions for. We have been uh, also working on references. This, these appointments are something which need to be done with complete diligence, and we will continue to perform that and complete the, uh, you know, filling in the gaps. The six months uh, results unto September was another question. Our target is to release those results within end of November, as we had done last year also. This year, results had been challenging, and I can assure you that we will be meeting the timelines far better than we have done for 2021 and 2022. There's a question on the ports at Madagascar. So, you know, this is again uh, a smart move uh, on our selection of our uh, project sites. So. Uh, Tamate is the main seaport of Madagascar. It is currently under further expansion, uh, a project which is being uh, uh, assisted by uh, Jap Japanese uh, uh, you know, uh, companies uh, for the Madagascan government. And Tamate port is quite a big port. All the capacity that we need is available for shipping our goods out from there in containers. In due course, as we evolve to optimize shipping costs, we may also consider bulk shipments, uh, you know, which could reduce the cost of shipping uh, for consumers who would buy in thousands of tons per uh, batch. On the funding for the future 54,000 tons capacity, uh, there was a question that just came in. How will the 30 to $35 million be financed? I do not have a ready-made answer that, okay, A, B, C, D on this. What I can say is our company, your company, has been very prudent in the way it funds its development. Today, we are in a position that we are fully funded to a very substantial production, which can give us reasonable earnings. So we will leverage those earnings, use them, or and you know uh, leverage them for debt funding our intent is to develop further madagascan capacities without any further equity raise for that purpose uh, i think i have covered most of the questions that i could uh, on the questions that have come uh, online right now uh now it should be uh hand over back to you please yes thank you for that Shishia. I, I think you've addressed those questions you can from investors and of course the company will review all questions submitted today and we will publish those responses on the investor me company platform before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback which i know is particularly important to the company could i please ask you for a few closing comments
Thanks a lot. Apologies. Thanks a lot. Apologies. Thanks a lot. I I missed it. Sorry. So um, again, thanks to all our investors for the time that they have devoted for this. If listening us out on where we stand and where we are going, thanks also for being a part of the company and those who would prospectively be a part of this company. We are a committed group of team members who are here to build something using the extensive expertise that we've developed over years in the space that we've been working in. And we will remain a committed set. And I can assure all our investors that we'll always be prudent in our cost structures and maintain what we have been doing. Thank you very much for your time. Shashir, Puravi and Amir, thank you very much for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management can better understand your views and expectation. This will only take a few minutes to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Tirupati Graphite PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Good morning to you all. Thank you so much.